Welcome to the Workbench After Hours podcast. My name is Keith and I'm your host. This is where we talk about the firearms community, shop talk, and everyday life experiences. This is episode 21 and I have the usual suspects back with me at their battle stations ready to talk your ear off. So, Chris, what's our whiskey that we're drinking this week? We got Maker's Mark whiskey. Nice. I don't know. We were talking about it at work, and it's been a while since I had it. So, I guess it kind of just inspired me to go buy a bottle and time to drink it. Hell yeah. It apparently made its mark, huh? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. So, uh, did you guys do anything against this week? I uh, watched you do a sale. Yeah, <laughs> Bryce finally came and picked up that uh, Masterpiece Arms Defender, and he was super excited to <laughs> get that, man. He's pumped. That's awesome. Yeah, I showed him how to break it down, So, and then he could also watch that video <laughs> in yeah. case he forgets. I said he's already watched it three times. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Told him to take a video when he shoots it, because I just want to see how, with that fake suppressor on the end, how the blast is coming out of the muzzle there yeah that and see the recoil that'd be interesting to Mm -hmm. see i can't imagine there's much with how heavy that thing was yeah he said that he so he loaded the magazine and then he said when he put the magazine in it automatically loaded a bullet into the chamber Hmm. yeah which is seems dangerous yeah (laughs) with the actual like submachine gun version um it's completely different than like your semi-auto the bolt like stays open the whole time Mm. so it's really dangerous to unless you actually know what you're doing to handle those (laughs) because a lot of people it's nothing like your normal one where the once it's empty it holds open and stuff like that that actually yeah it's completely different (laughs) so i think they're taking the same design but hopefully it doesn't pop one off on accident (laughs) yeah he just was like i he's like i did it I did it, and then I, you know, cleared the slide or whatever, and the round popped out. And he's like, "Well, I didn't even fucking chamber one, so that <laughs> that could have been bad." Yeah. <laughs> yep. So cool. Um, yeah, I had a Marie, and we just had a video go live on Wednesday, just um, talking about how to get your significant other into guns, or at least comfortable with them. Yep. Because I know that's pretty common where you have generally a dude that is in the guns and his wife whether girlfriend significant well, other whatever yeah, probably isn't or is even scared of them just because they don't have the experience that the guy does with them so we kind of went over how she took that lady's only gun class and once she learned about how to handle them safely and also how to use one totally comfortable with them now sneaky video too yesterday because when you were <laughs> selling that to bryce you talked about how you would <laughs> taking the dogs on a walk earlier in shorts and in a t-shirt because it was pretty cold out yesterday. And I was like, oh, okay. And then as I was leaving, I looked, he's in jeans and a nice shirt and his hair's all done. And I was like, what is he up to? Yep. <laughs> sure enough, the next morning pops Did up. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have anything to do. And I didn't have time to do like an actual video on a product. So I'm like, you know, this is a perfect time to get Marie to do this video. I asked her, I'm like, hey, you want to do this video? She's like, okay. Yep. It was a, what, 24 minute video, so not Which is why I was surprised, because before I clicked on the link, I thought you were just talking about it, just doing a video. And I was like, 24 minutes, I clicked on it. Marie pops up and I was like, okay. I even had <laughs> That's her, a good one. I had her do the intro. Yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. the. I did it the first time and I stumbled a little bit. And she's like, and I'm like, well, you do it. Smooth. <laughs> there you go. So she's getting more comfortable on camera, which is nice. So speaking of which, how's uh, your podcast, I guess, your, you and your wife's podcast journey going? I don't know. I've been looking a lot and talking to you over the text messages <laughs> and a little bit on the phone about what to get and how to start up. Mm-hmm. I've been looking at the Roadmaster that we use and then the Tascam uh, Podcast 4 and been watching videos and them comparing and uh, they're both, they both are good, but just trying to make that decision is hard. Yeah, I so I've had this road and I love it. And that's what pretty much anybody that does podcasting has. And also people use it for YouTube videos. It's awesome. Like yeah. it's expensive, but it's worth every penny for what I've used it for. Um, but I didn't know anything about that task cam. And because road's been out for several yeah. years now. Yeah. And task cam's kind of newer to the market, but same price point. 
basically the same size, but there's some different features. Yep. The one feature that I like, I wish this thing had, is it has a button up here for a talk back. And that's basically if I hit that button, I could say something to you guys, you hear it in the headphones, and it doesn't get on the recording. So I'm like, <laughs> I need that to tell Hunter to move closer to his microphone. <laughs> mm -hmm. That would have so been useful to that, know. That is like the one thing that I wish this had. <laughs> yeah, that and I was sitting there watching it, and they got a voice changer, so you can make it really high pitch, like you're on helium, mm -hmm. or like really low, and like you're trying to hide your voice. But I don't know what you if you would ever actually use that though. It'd just be fun for like a joke video or something like that. Yeah. So. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Or have a really high pitched one all the all the time. Yeah, there's. If you're in high school making a video, yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> yeah disguise has, yourself. <laughs> you're finding out there's a lot of potential equipment that you can get. I mean, you could go cheap to get the Fashi Right ones where it has two mic inputs, yeah. plugs into your computer for like 175 bucks, or this one has four mics inputs, and then you have you know Bluetooth for a cell phone if you yeah. want to have a call in, uh, a couple other things on here so it's hey you can go down that rabbit hole really quick oh yeah that <laughs> yep. should be good like if you wanted to interview somebody who didn't want to be on camera so they could wear like the hat and the hoodie and be yep. in the dark you know and then you change it so their voice is all you know crazy. yeah you could do like that and it was like <clears throat> man that'd be so fun do like fake interviews with people and have their voice change and disguise it <laughs> that'd be a good one if she's doing like a mystery podcast or something yeah. talking about like murders yeah so no there's enough of those out there jesus <laughs> i don't know my wife listens to those all the time i don't know how many there could be because that's all she listens to your wife listens to that Con non-stop <laughs> like a bunch of other girls i talk to that oh we listen to the murder podcast like there's so many shows on tv about that already yeah mm -hmm. and it was bad there for a while because now she's all caught up, so she can only listen to, you know, a couple episodes a week. But before, she started at the beginning on multiple of them, and she listened through all, you know, <laughs> 300 episodes on each of them. And I was just, just driving me insane because half of them, you know, they start intersecting. And it's like, you just listened about the same story on the other one like a week ago. <laughs> you really have to hear it again. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyways. This is the first time that I've actually had makers on the rocks. Yeah. Usually I've mixed it with something. The wedding, uh, Marie and I, the weddings, Marie and I bartend, they usually have makers, but we're mixing it with like Sprite, Coke, things like that. So not bad. No. Once you get that water a little bit, mm -hmm. get a little more flavor and it takes a little bit of the heat out. Yeah. Chris brought over this tray of four cubes, like three giant square <laughs> uh, ice cubes that you're actually supposed to use when you're drinking whiskey. Yeah. It's kind of nice. They were, they were kind of yeah, a pain the first time nice. getting them out. <laughs> Yep, we'll see how long they last. Yeah. We dropped one on the floor, and so we had to give it to the dogs outside <laughs> in the hallway here. They love eating ice, but this one's gigantic. Max is probably like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, I was holding it out to him, and he licked it a couple times and kind of looked at me and then like just ever so gently grabbed it with his teeth and slowly <laughs> backed away. I was like, I'm not going to take it away from yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> they've been quiet out there ever since. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah, I think that's all we've done in guns this week right anybody else how's your safe done anything with your safe no not recently no still waiting on lights and finding this right size dehumidifying rod to kind of fit in there how's your uh, injury there hunter it's good <laughs> it's actually it's fine now it's so annoying to put shoes on and off but it's just because it's like right in the middle of my foot so even if i completely unlace something it still like rubs it but yeah, it's good. It's gonna have a cool scar. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh man. Cool. Well, uh, you guys have anything you want to talk about first before getting to our main topic? Nope. Did you want to talk about? You were uh, mentioning draft picks, sports. Oh yeah, I guess we can pull that up. You guys want to talk about With that the first? Awesome Kansas City Chiefs drafts that they got. Pick number one, Trent McDuffie, cornerback. Cornerback, we got an A rank on that, 53%. Yep. So uh, can't complain about that. Number two, George Karlaftis. 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 Yep. Fucking hey, Dredger. big-headed white dude. Only been playing football for five years. Can you believe that? Nope. <laughs> we got an A grade on him as well. And then let's see. We, got, we really beefed up. 
the secondary of this draft. It seems mm-hmm. like corners, safeties. Well, just the defense in general. Yeah. We got we drafted what one receiver, and that was it. Yep, and that was Kai Moore. And then I guess maybe we got an offensive. We got an tackle. offensive line. They're they're really tackle, excited right? about him. Yeah, they said that he'll probably start as a right tackle or maybe a guard. And they were saying Sky Moore, he got <clears throat> he had an amazing freshman year. Yep. And then his back was bugging him. So they couldn't figure out what was wrong. They took an x ray and apparently he's got this it's pretty rare, but two of his vertebrae are fused together. Just like naturally were fused together. So he had surgery on that. Was feeling better. Then I think he had a broken foot. And then <laughs> so he he was super injured, but he you know he dominated still really really high um ceiling ceiling and so we got him pretty much for a steal because he probably would have been drafted way higher if he wouldn't have had to go through those injuries but he's not injury prone both of them were yeah like you know it's not like he's <laughs> uh gonna get injured easily but so that's awesome yeah, and then excited. we just got a bunch of corners and some safeties yep but yeah really beefed up the the defense and if they can even slightly hold their own who cares if our offense isn't as high powered as it normally is i mean we got uh, patrick mahomes so i i think our offense is gonna be fine yeah it's gonna be just fine i i i feel like juju's gonna really tear it up because you know he's a good route runner he's a good route runner he had an amazing season before he got hurt last year yep. and then i mean how excited could you be when you know big ben was a great quarterback but in this, that last season i think he was averaging like five yards or, or six yards per yep. pass attempt. It's like, okay, well. Now you have Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yep. So get after it. People were calling for him to retire before he even announced it. Yeah. Yep. Right. It's like, ah, man. Oh, I can't wait. It's yeah. going to be a good season. <laughs> I know I'm wearing our um, 2015 World Series hoodie, the Royals. <laughs> it's been a hot minute since we've had that, but. It was even more of a hot minute (laughs) before they had that one. So we're not doing the best right now in baseball, but it's still early. Last, yeah, last night I watched the first game, uh, my first game uh, from the first inning to the ninth inning through and through. And we put up seven runs and looked like a badass offense. And then today we get blown out, I think, 10 10 nothing. Yeah, right. So that's, they're going to have a rough season, I feel like. I don't know. Everybody said that, and then everybody says that initially, and then they end up finding their groove most of the time. But yeah, it's like you know, it's they have, of course, not 162 this year. It's going to be a little bit shorter, but there's so many games, and so much can change between yeah. now and freaking October. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have. I don't have high hopes this season. <laughs> Bobby Witt though hit his first home run last night, so that yeah. was kind of cool. Really nice. low. Looked like he was yeah. swinging a golf club. Right. And did we? I heard we just brought up a DH. Uh, so he, what's his name? I, he had a he got his first base hit and then his first RBI last night too. Um, he can catch as what well. he's a catcher, but I can't remember his name. He's gonna be really good. They just wanted him to get a little more time down in the minors. In the minors, but I think they because they only play like maybe a hundred and. 20 games or something like that. And he had 46 home runs or something crazy like that. So he, uh, yeah, I think once he gets used to it up in the bigs, he's going to be a monster. So how many years do you think Salvi has left in him? He's getting up there in age. Quite a few. He'll eventually no longer be catching and then just be a DH forever. Probably Hopefully. until they have to put him at first base. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he stays with us. I know. I mean, hell, he's got Kansas City tattooed on him. So yeah, you know. and he's got a contract extension. So that's cool. He'll probably retire as a royal. Mm-hmm. That's just probably raking in the dough. I mean, oh yeah, shit. He had the most home runs out of all the catchers last year, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And like in Royals history for a catcher too, wasn't it? Maybe in Royals history. Yeah. Or he was tied with maybe Billy Butler. I just, I still miss those days of. Mark, um, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. 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 Yeah. That was like the best year in baseball. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> just <laughs> juiced out of their mind. Yeah. It was so fun. I know we, we were talking, talking about, about the juice ball yesterday and they're showing videos of people like bunting it and it's all the way out in the outfield. Mm-hmm. And home runs. It's mm-hmm. like, man, 
where they're trying not to juice the ball this this year, but they're also trying some stuff out in the minors with the uh, pitch clock. Yeah, <clears throat> people are getting mad about it. It needs to happen. Yeah, it's, you can't be taking your time. You right. said juice ball. What does that mean? The ball just has more pop to it. So if you make contact, it's gonna go further, travel faster. Is it just what how they make the ball? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and for a while, <clears throat> they were. Like that's the one thing they have control over is juicing the ball, but it's the same as if somebody had like a cork bat, essentially just the opposite. But the yes. pitching performance goes way down. Offense goes way up, but now they're just using regular balls again. So the pitching has just been dominant. I don't think I can't remember. It was something like it's been 25 or 30 years since a team, since the league average at this point in the season, uh, each team's average is below 250 their hitting average nice. and it's just the pitchers are just dominating right now so they're like what are we gonna do about this oh, time to juice the ball again yeah <laughs> yeah because what i mean it's great when a pitcher is doing good you know throwing strikes it's a boring game it's a boring game to watch you yeah know? you need you need people to score hit runs if both pitchers are doing well and there's a pitcher's duel it's okay but mm -hmm. it's still so much more boring than if there's people hitting just moonshot after moonshot yeah base hits yep <sighs> I don't yeah. know. Hopefully they do better this year. You should bring your mic closer to you if you're going to scoop back. Me? No, Chris. <laughs> um, I was listening to this podcast the other day and they were talking about, I can't remember, like cr the team name was like Crazy Bananas or something like that. And this guy bought a minor league team and it, he's no longer affiliated with any major team, but he just has the two, these two teams play each other. They play each other every single time, but they they made up their own rules so like once you step in the batter's box you cannot get out for any reason of the batter's box otherwise you're out and the pitcher can throw as fast he doesn't have to wait or anything like that the second he gets the ball if he wants he can throw if you're stepping in the batter's box and he's ready he can throw the ball the second you step in the batter's box and then they also did i didn't l listen to all the rules but <laughs> if you get a walk the second you get a walk everybody on the field all the defensive players have to touch the ball and then they try and tag you out. So you can just take your walk to first and be fine. You're good. If you want to get greedy and try and go for second, you can. If you want to get super greedy and try and go to third, you can. But <laughs> they all know it's happening, so they get the ball moved around really quick and then it just turns into a giant uh, game of pickle to try and get <laughs> – I mean, it just sounds like they took baseball and made it really entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> um, purists would never let that happen in the MLB or anything like that, but it just – I thought that was a – a cool little mix to it. Well, have you um seen that new football league that they're airing right now? It yeah yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's they're doing all the games in a stadium in Alabama right now, mm -hmm. and there's I don't know maybe twelve teams if that, and it's basically if you couldn't make it in the NFL, you're playing for this league, mm -hmm. and I know there's a couple of coaches that used to play for the NFL that's doing this and. I've watched a couple of games briefly because there was nothing else on TV and there's nobody in the stands. Right. It. I'm like, yeah, that's, it's terrible. And they, they have the college rule where it's only one foot inbounds um, when you catch and a couple other different things, but it just, I don't, they always try to do that mm -hmm. with a new league and it never works. It could be fun. I heard people talking about it and saying like, this is a very entertaining way to do it. But the problem that I think, all these other leagues fall short of is we want to watch the best of the best do it mm -hmm. and the best of the best are in the NFL. So yep. no one yep. really cares about this on the side and it's not, you're not tied to it cause you didn't go to college there. It's not your college team. You know, it's just like, but it's the scraps. <laughs> it, so it sounds like it'd be entertaining to yeah. watch. Yeah. It's, it was all right. I mean, they were making good plays, but it's just sad watching it with empty stands. It's yeah. Like, Man, this is, <laughs> right. I think there were a couple people in the stands as probably family members of oh, some of the players. 12 people total. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was terrible, but yeah, they're playing because this is the first year. Is it the CFL? Uh, something like that, but they're playing all the games at whatever stadium in Alabama. Hmm. I know there's like a Seattle team and some other teams, but again, it's everybody that can't make it in the NFL. Kind of like, Kind of like, what is it, like D2 hockey? Like we that have G League in the NBA. USFL. US, there we go. United States Football League. And again, they don't have as many teams, so 
it doesn't make it as competitive. Yeah. I don't know. NFL's just too good. It's yeah. hard to I guess beat that, I guess. I guess if you want to watch football in the summertime, mm-hmm. watch that. But again, you're watching teams that who the hell are these guys? Mm-hmm. But yeah. Well, the other annoying annoying thing about the MLB too that's slowing it down is <clears throat> they have the paywall where like in Kansas City, if you want to watch the games, if you don't have the cable package that has Bally Sports, then you have to get the Bally Sports app. And not only is that, you have to get the Bally Sports Plus, which is like an additional charge mm-hmm. to watch your games. And, you know, if there's a game, like say you have YouTube TV like we do, and they're playing, it's it's aired on ESPN, but it's in your market, they black it out. You can't watch it. So it's like, they're making it so hard to get people to watch a sport that already nobody watches. It's like, yeah. what's your, yeah. what's your, what's your uh, business model here? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't think I watched more than a couple of games last year because it's we don't have cable, and there's no other way. We have my mother-in-law has Xfinity, so we use her app, and I can I can watch her like Go app on cable, but mm-hmm. I can't stream it directly from a TV. It has to be from either a phone computer or like an Apple stick if you're streaming it directly from like a smart tv it won't like yeah so it's like, you. man so i don't want to have to go through this hard, <laughs> all this work just to watch a boring baseball game. <laughs> right. <laughs> right it's like what i happened to the old days it's just on the main channels like four five nine mm-hmm. like why can't they just do that well that's that's the other thing they were talking about too is like with the nfl all you need is a simple $20 TV antenna and you can get every single yep. game. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But God forbid baseball, who is suffering so bad in viewership on TV and in the stands, hmm. let's make it impossible for them to watch the games. And you wonder why. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, um, so our main topic that I want to discuss just because it's that time of year is I always hate calling it prepping because when I say prepping, people always think Doomsday, Doomsday exactly. Preppers. Doomsday Preppers. That show that aired years ago, Doomsday Preppers. Just nobody nobody really does that unless, you know. You got a lot of money. Yeah. And nothing else to do. Yeah. Most people, I mean, there are people that, that do that. But uh, prepping or just being prepared is like, so I used to travel a lot for work for an insurance company and I would go to all these devastated areas and see all the after effects of hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, floods, I- anything. And when you go into these areas, you know, you have houses that were damaged, but you could still live in there, but there'd be no power or there'd be no services around there. And most people aren't prepared enough to spend even just a few days without power or food and water, stuff like that. So they, you know, when you get in a heavy, especially hurricanes, a heavily devastated area. I mean, you're kind of screwed. There were, when I worked Hurricane Sandy, uh, there was no gas in New Jersey um, or New York for a long period of time. I was driving from Allentown, Pennsylvania to Newark, New Jersey every day, which is a two hour drive one way. And then right before I got to New Jersey, I'd have to gas up to make sure I can do my job all around Jersey and then drive back. And while you're in Jersey and New York, no gas. And so people, you know, you can't drive your cars, can't uh, run generators. <laughs> Why'd you have to stay so far out? Because there were no hotels because everybody, you know, had, ev- had evacuated. And, yeah. Yeah. Cause when you have those hurricanes, not only do you have like all the power crews coming in, you have, you have all the FEMA people, you have all the insurance adjusters and just everybody coming in to help out, but you need rooms for those people. And a lot of hotels, were without power as well or, or damaged. So you're kind of limited on hotels and people that didn't want to stay in their house or couldn't stay in their house also had to. So hotels <laughs> go away real quick. Kill me now. I'd quit if I had to do a four hour round trip well, every when single day. When you're getting paid a lot of extra money in overtime. You're probably not going to worry about it's it. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly stand a hour car ride to go do something I wanted it. Yeah, I mean, it, it sucked. It, it was not fun, but I just kept thinking, I'm like, I'm getting paid to sit here and drive. Yeah. So it's... It's it windshield sucked. time. Yeah. Were, you listening to po- were you listening to podcasts back then or anything? No. Or was I was just straight radio. Straight radio. Yeah, because that, that was back in 2012. Ooh. So that was... Before podcasts were big. <laughs> yeah. And everyone was doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and 
luckily out there, you know, it's new scenery that I'm not used to here in the Midwest, so that helped. But, but yeah, so with this being as an, an insurance, our busy time of the year with all the storms and everything going on, um, it's nice to just be prepared and have extra items stored away so you can weather a small storm. Uh, you know, if you're without power for a few days, you have, you know, dry food or other ways to cook food, not relying on power. It helps if you have a gas stove because you could still cook on that. But, um, what would, sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying there's, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that are about prepping, but there are some that are doomsday preppers, but there are other ones that are geared towards, you know, being an everyday, just being prepared for small events like that. You know, in our old house, we got a huge snowstorm and we had overhead power lines. So every time we got a huge snowstorm or an ice storm, we'd be out without power for a week. So everybody else in our neighborhood left. And <laughs> that sucks because then you got to worry about your pipes freezing because most people forget to turn their water off. Yep. So, but I wanted to stay there and we could. So we had a, a generator and we had, I had two or three five gallon things of extra gas to run it. And then we, had an extension cord, a couple of extension cords coming in. One was powering a refrigerator, a um, couple heaters, and some lights. And we made it through just fine. Make you know, sure you have your generator outside, people. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was it was in the backyard. Yeah. Um, but we we were able to to stay there. You know, we had food to cook, we had water and stuff, extra water um, in the basement, you know, just we just stored extra jugs of water and some cases of water and my wife looks the cook, so we had a lot of pantry items that she, she was able to cook. And, of course, you can go out and stuff like that during the day, too. But most people aren't prepared enough to be without power for even 24 hours. So it's this time of year that, you know, you have all the storms coming through, tornadoes. And obviously, depending on what your area is prone for is going to dictate kind of what you need to prepare for. Yeah. So, you know, if you're in a earthquake zone versus a hurricane zone, it's going to be totally different. Midwest, our main threat is tornadoes, tornadoes, ice um, storms, <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. So it's just being prepared in, in ways. So I, I don't know if you guys have any experience or knowledge of. I don't know. I always just keep random food <laughs> yeah. in the house, even if you don't like it. Just keep, especially if canned goods. Canned goods last seem like forever. So we got a bunch of canned goods. I always have jerky in the house, so good source of protein. <laughs> yeah, and back back then when I when I started stocking up on more stuff, I I did the thing to where I bought more canned food and just other like dry food, but I never had to use it, so then that stuff goes bad. Yeah. So what I've learned is to buy, you know, if you go to the grocery store right now, things are expensive, but if stuff's on sale, buy like an extra can of whatever yeah. or something maybe an extra case of water and just store that away for a while but make sure it's something that you eat anyway so that way you can just rotate your stock and you know if you end up needing it you have extra and it's stuff that you're going to eat anyway versus if you go buy that like mountain house dry food stuff that <laughs> is freeze dried and that stuff is crap and so bad for you but <laughs> um but like other stuff, if you buy a bunch of canned food that you're not going to eat normally, it will probably go bad. So yeah. you just want to kind of – and in FEMA on their website even says, you know, be prepared for like three days without power. So have extra water. I think a person goes through like five gallons of water a day or something crazy like that. It's more than you think. Uh, that you Unless go you're me. <laughs> yeah. But you think, you think of everything else outside of just drinking, like yeah. washing dishes, taking a shower, doing laundry, stuff like that, that all that water adds up. So mm -hmm. yeah. you want to make sure you have water, like brushing your teeth and, and cooking. Yeah. So you want to make sure you have some of that. I, in our old house, um, we had a basement that we just used for storage. So I would always have a shelf full of like five gallon jugs of water, but then also individual, um, things of water and then we would keep extra food down there just just in case and then in the shop out back is where we had the generator and extra things of gas because i mean if, if you put that stabilizer in the gas it, it'll stay good for a long time yeah and you're going to use that gas for lawn mowing and stuff like that so um yeah fema says to be prepared because i've been in areas with fema and they're a joke <laughs> like they <laughs> it's take... crazy have you done their certifications uh-uh oh my gosh we had to do it for work and 
Thank God for Google. What is what are you what are you like, getting certified for? Like they have different ones. They we have to do like a two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, and like six and eight hundred. And each one of them are like thirty, forty questions. It's like what? So what are the certs actually for though? For FEMA. So you're FEMA certified for certain disasters or mm. like you got one for disaster, one for like uh being part of the FEMA emergency response teams, things like that. And man. I when I ran into FEMA, I always di- ran into the person who decided if you get money for the damage to your house or not, and most people didn't because you either made too much money, or if say you are a landlord and rent houses, any of those houses you rent out don't count. You don't get money for those, and the money that you do get from FEMA is a loan. <laughs> <It's, laughs> you got to pay that back. It's a low interest loan, but they're not giving you free money. Yeah. So, but most of the time I see people and it'd be something that the insurance doesn't cover. And then they were relying on FEMA, but then FEMA didn't cover it because you either made too much or there wasn't enough damage or something stupid. What does the acronym stand for? Federal Emergency Management something. Come on, FEMA certified. What is it? I don't even remember. (laughs) I did that like a year ago and I was like, why are we having to do this? Mm Mm-hmm. But you'll you'll see you've you've seen them like when there's a hurricane they set up like a tent city or oh, yeah, yeah like, like that. I've heard of them for mm-hmm. sure I just was wondering what yeah they got that and they got like where you can be certain responsibilities you take quiz on to be mm. like the FEMA <laughs> overall in charge or part of a response team or disaster team or it just it's I don't know it's way too complicated I think too complicated for something that they don't really use very often no, or I drill don't. about. I mean, you can practice this stuff so then you get more proficient at things, but they don't really do that. No. They might do a drill a year. What's that going to do? You need to do like a drill every other week mm-hmm. to get proficient. Well, especially with the weather, the way it is now, how we're getting more and more severe storms yeah. all the time. And yeah, it, and even on the smaller storms, there's so many people that, you know, you think it'd be common sense if you're without power to, <laughs> Either keep your refrigerator shut for 24 hours, or if you know, if think it's going to be longer than that, find something else to do with that food. Yeah. <laughs> so many people just leave it in there and then the, it, it just leaks out. And I'm like, you could have put it in coolers. There's so many <laughs> other things you got. There's, you just got to be smart. <laughs> common sense isn't common. Yeah. No, it, it's people don't think about <laughs> stuff. And that's, that's the sad part is we're so used to all these accommodations and luxuries that, yep. You know, if you lose power, everybody turns stupid. Yeah. So it it's nice to just, you know, be prepared. Don't you don't be a doomsday prep or anything like that. But depending on like my sister lives in Wichita, tornado alley down there, and so she has a, an emergency bag that she grabs anytime the tornado sirens go off with, you know, extra supplies for her kids and just stuff that they need because uh, you never know when a tornado is going to hit. So like last weekend, yeah, yeah. and over, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right on the other side of town from her. So have like, if you're in a, a tornado area or somewhere that's prone to like hurricanes, have like a backpack with maybe some extra clothes, shoes, um, stuff like that. So that way, if you have to leave in a hurry, you could grab that bag and at least have something. Whereas, you know, there's a lot of people that a fire happens or a tornado happens and literally they're walking out barefoot with nothing on and, they're, yeah, they, they, <laughs> they literally just, lose everything. It's it's just, I mean, sometimes you can't help it, but you know they. Yeah, I mean, even in our cars, we got spare clothes for mm-hmm. all of us. We got a pair of shoes in there just in case, blankets, a full outfit usually. Yep. Just in case, because you never know. No, you never know where you're going to get stranded. Any of that. Yeah. Yeah, city boy over here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Keith. So then, in your opinion, it doesn't have to be in any particular order, but what's like, what's the five most important things you think you should keep to be prepared for a disaster? So two different scenarios. So the first one we'll we'll say like having something in your vehicle. So what I do is when I used to travel, I would always have a dedicated backpack, like a larger backpack where I would put say emergency, emergency supplies. If my car would ever break down and I'd have to walk home, they're called get home bags. Um, But yeah, they're, so I would always keep, flashlight um flashlight knives a way to start a fire in case you ever have to start a fire um 
extra clothes, like socks, for example. You always want to have extra socks. Um, I never... I want that gangrene. Yeah, I never really put clothes in there because I always had separate suitcases for clothes and stuff. So my case was a little different than, you know, somebody that might not have a suitcase. Yeah, have an extra pair of clothes in there. Um, water and food. So I had a one of those little camping mess kits and like a stir, folding sterno stove to where I could, and then like some dry food to where you just pour in water and can make like rice or I forgot what it is, but make some food. let's go. Yeah, <laughs> so I had the stuff in there to where I can make a little camp stove thing um, and it packs up really easy, fits in there. I have um, some of that rope, what is that? Nylon, <clears throat> uh, like the parachute cord? Yeah, yeah. I have that stuff because you can use that stuff for anything. Um, <clears throat> stuff to make, obviously, lighters. Uh, so just, and it also depends on the type of year. So if it's in the summer, you mm. don't need all that stuff. Winter clothes. Yeah. But if it's in the winter time, you'll need like heavier clothes, like a blanket, like you said. So just having a bag, store it in your car with some extra emergency stuff. I also had like tools, like, you know, screwdrivers little small little ratchet set in case you needed to fix something on your car you had it um so just stuff that depending on your area and how far you're traveling what you would need to possibly walk home if you had to so for your house main thing is water uh because that's what you're going to die of first is thirst so make sure you have plenty of water stored away food so whether it's you know extra dry food canned goods um Rice and beans go a long way. So extra food. If you have a generator, extra gas for sure. Um, and just your everyday kind of what extra supplies. The three minute rule or the three rule, three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food. Something like that. Yeah, I think that, that's what Yeah, so just kind of go by that because. Well, it has nothing to do with this. But. Yeah, it, it, it does though. Like that's kind of how you want to have your mindset. You know, the thing you need most to survive on is water. So mm -hmm. you want to have plenty of water because, like we said, you, you go through a lot more water than you think <laughs> uh, about. So have plenty of extra water around because, you know, if there's this big swarm area, well, half the time you can't even use that water. You have to boil it. Um, so water, extra food, and then once you kind of get that build up, start buying, like, extra toilet paper and <laughs> stuff like that. When you're looking at a generator... Is there a specific size that you would recommend and what, what's the typical cost of a generator? Do you know? It depends on the load and what you're going to put on it. And yeah, you for the then, average suburban house. You're, you're not going to power your whole house. Yeah. Like, which you can get those backup generators backup for generator. your houses. But yeah. But those are pricey. Like yeah. Five grand depending mm. on the size of your house. And there's a lot more work that goes involved with that. But like the one I have, I can't remember the size of it. It was like three to four hundred dollars. Mm. It's a Ryobi gas generator, and it was enough to run constantly and power our refrigerator, a couple space heaters, and some lights. So, and it really, we ran most of that at night um, because during the day we didn't have to run so much. Um, Just of keeping the, the space refrigerator heaters. going, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, and then with that extra gas it was, and stuff but they make the smaller portable ones in case you know if you're living in a smaller house or don't want to because they're loud so if, if you're really close to your neighbors maybe get one of those smaller ones but it just depends on what your budget really yeah I, I would say a good one anywhere from three to five hundred bucks okay but you can find used ones the first one i had and we used a lot i bought used for like 80 bucks from a buddy so um and we used the hell out of that one it just the wheel was broke off and having to wheel it in and out of my shop sucks so i'm like i gotta get one with good wheels on it <laughs> so but luckily i haven't had to use it in our new house since all of our stuff is underground but we have still less power just not for long periods of time yeah and also what we had a powering is our sump pump because it Every time that freaking sump pump went out or we lost power, it always backed up. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we lost power, that's the first thing I plugged in was this. I'd run another cord down to the basement and have it plugged into the sump pump. And that ran it and 
we, we could usually go most of the night on a tank of gas. So it, it worked out. Was it the most comfortable living? No, but you know, you were living. <laughs> yeah. Snuggle with each other, add a couple extra blankets. People aren't looting and your house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because everybody's houses were dark on that street. It's like, mm -hmm. it just takes people, anybody can break in and do that. Or again, most people forget to shut off their water. So then we have no power. Your temperature drops in your house and your pipes burst. And that causes a whole other insurance issue. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many pipes break, but sometimes you can't help it because there's, if you're home, there's no insulation in a wall. But, um, but yeah, just if you can't afford a generator, have one. Even if you don't ever use it very often, it's always better to have. That and like, I don't know, having battery backups help too a little bit. And uh, those jump packs you can buy for like cars, mm -hmm. they come really in handy. Yep. Because you can also plug in some of your, like your phone charger if you need it. It's got lights on it. You can jump start your car. So... It just make sure you have a pair of jump cables in your car. Yeah. yeah. You'd be surprised how many don't people don't I have them no in their idea. Cars. Yep. It's like, yeah, you have a newer car, but your battery can still go dead and yep. leave the lights on by accident. So, or if I, someone needs your help, you go to jump their car, open up your trunk. Oh, I don't have any. I guess yeah. I just drove <laughs> out here for nothing. Yep. Yeah. My, my uh, wife isn't big into this stuff, so she leaves it up to me, but I have, I packed her a, a little tool bag that I keep in her car where I have jumper cables. You're, general tools in case you need them um, we got a flashlight in there and a couple other things like one of those space reflecting blankets and yeah stuff. Um, and i'm like i just would probably never need it but just in case here's better to need it. or better to have and not need than to need and not have exactly yep. exactly so. also i got my wife one of those um it's a it's a pocket. Well, it's not a pocket. It's a pretty big knife, but it's a folding knife. But it's got the uh, window break on the bottom, and it's yep. got the seatbelt cutter yep. on the side. So those are probably pretty handy to have in your car as yeah. well. Yeah, and obviously in Midwest, you're going to need to change your bag out between seasons. So your some what you have in your bag for the winter, it's going to be different than what you have there in the summertime. And it's always nice to go through your bag every now and then, just to make sure everything's still good. You had still food. fits. Yeah, yeah, still fits. <laughs> if you had food in there, maybe you need to swap it out if it um, went bad or anything. But just, you know, keep it in there and just, you know, it doesn't take up that much room. Um, and then, you know, maybe have another one for each family member in the house just in case you have to leave in an emergency. You have some stuff to take with you. And maybe, you know, keep some money stashed away somewhere. That way in case a tornado does come through, or a fire or something, and you don't have time to grab your wallet, at least if you grab that bag, you still have some money or even like a, a spare credit card or something in there. Yeah. Um, and I always like storing my, you know, those document, your personal documents, like your birth certificate and stuff like that. And like one of those fire safes. Yeah, in a fire yeah. safe. Even if you can't afford a big gun safe, just even the small little files. Files, safe fire safe, safes you yeah. buy. They're usually on sale too around like uh, Black Friday. You can get them cheap. Yeah. So that they're fireproof, um, and also in case your house gets broken into, it's a little harder for someone yeah. to steal all that stuff. So um, always recommend doing that. Like your very important documents that you don't, but that are kind of hard to replace, keep in some sort of safe, just in case. And then, do you recommend in those, you know, your get home bag to put, you know, like certain types of magazines or anything like that in case your phone dies and. You get a little lonely and cold at night <laughs> <laughs> or is, is that just an optional thing personal preference <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well what i did i do have like a small little other bag in there where i have like a toothbrush toothpaste an extra thing of deodorant oh that's big well who cares how you smell but you wake up in the morning your mouth is just yeah like, ugh. yeah so it's like little stuff like that and i got little things of like shampoo or whatever just in case you know because you're gonna be walking home you might start stinking <laughs> <laughs> so just and it's all the each person's bag is gonna be a little different depending on their needs and situations so but just there's a lot of youtube videos out there that are, are helpful or stuff that you can read on the internet fema is fema even has a list on their website what they re recommend having flashlights having extra flashlights and batteries around the house we have these um emergency candles and they have some sort of uh oil in there that burns slower than wax candles. So we have, I have several of those kind of throughout the house and we use those when we were without power 
at the old house and it's just if you know have candlelight go into that way you're not using the power from your generator all, all the time we played monopoly and drank cosmos in the dark <laughs> <laughs> by candlelight it was, it was kind of funny that is fun <laughs> yeah we're like yeah sat next to a space heater had some candles going a couple cosmos and romantic then, uh, dinner yeah uh, canned food on the fire <laughs> luckily it was a uh, my wife likes to cook. She was, and we had a gas stove at the house. She was able to make something a little bit tastier. Tastier. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know why this question just came into my head. But when you're talking about the specific oil that burns longer, how did they used to make torches back in the day? And was it like a 15 minute burn time, a 10 minute, or did they actually like stay lit like that for really long periods of time? I bet, no it, was idea. Just, I bet it was kerosene. I bet it's what they used. So would that burn out pretty quick? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? They're like like walking forever with their torches. Well, that and then the old streetlights, they'd actually go out and actually light the streetlights, you know? Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I know. It's a dumb question, but when you're talking about (laughs) it burning longer, I thought to myself, I've always wondered how that works. That or uh, what? uh, I also buy those uh, rechargeable lights that are, you can just plug into a USB and Mm -hmm. you can charge them. And I got a couple of those around the house. Yeah. And, like our generator that we have actually has USB imports. Yeah. So you can recharge them that way too. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much he spent on it. I probably should have thought about this today because I knew we were doing this topic, but my brother-in-law has a, it's not that big. It's probably like, I don't know, three inches thick by six by four maybe. And it's a fold out um, solar panel. And yep. so he can put it in his dash or whatever. I was like, does the heat affect it? And he's like, this one's, rated for like an insane amount of heat so it's not going to overcook or anything but that'd be a, a nice little thing to be able to carry around because it's got usb port it's got a, an actual um socket plug in and he says it'll charge his phone like if he plugs it in it'll charge his phone really fast so yeah yeah anything anything that can charge your charge anything electric yeah. electronic definitely have that um i always recommend having a spare thing of propane if you have a propane grill that way you can still cook food on that. Um, especially if you just so happen to be almost out and then <laughs> uh, your power's out. So you need a way to cook something. You have an extra one. We we have two because um, we use the grill quite a bit. But I, I always have an extra one. Yeah. Um, and you can buy those uh, heat, you know, they look like, like a mesh heat, heat thing yeah. or whatever. And if you really got desperate, you could use that for heat if you needed to. Yeah. And if you have a fireplace... Um, Use that. Make sure if you have a wood burning fireplace, you get that thing cleaned out regularly. <laughs> um, and then if gas one, because gas will run without power, so yep. that's a way to heat your house as well uh, without using a generator. So there's plenty of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. <laughs> Definitely, like I said, flashlights. I, I'm a, I got some awesome yeah. bright flashlights that I love. I use them for work because they. Flashlights nowadays are way brighter than oh. those mag lights used oh, to yeah. be. Although you can't beat the crap out of somebody with them. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I still have a mag light just for that purpose. Uh. Yeah, I got one of those tall, like I got, I think I got a Harbor Freight. You can like, it's got magnets on the end too. Mm-hmm. You can sit there and have it underneath the hood of your car. You can hook it onto something. And man, I got bright and then like you can dim it. So, and it's rechargeable. That's, that's the best part about it. One other thing that we have, since we don't have a gas stove here, um, we have a, it's like a, a, a single stove and it's, I forgot what type of gas it has, but there's, I have like a package of 12 canisters of this gas that it can use and it's safe to use indoors. Um, so we have that. So since we don't have um, an electric stove anymore, we have that. I don't know what happened on my computer there. <laughs> um, so that helps. So yeah, just other ways that you can think of to cook food without power. That, that thing I have is super inexpensive, and I think a box of 12 of those gas cans were pretty cheap. Just make sure it's rated for interior yeah. use. They do make some gas heaters, like a kerosene heater is yeah. rated for indoors. Um, so just make sure it's rated for indoors before you use it. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts also of Also practice, so you know how to start yeah. <laughs> some yeah. of them too, like these generators. Don't just or... keep it in the yeah. in the box and then have yeah. to worry about putting it together yeah. in the dark. By flashlight. Yeah. 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 So yeah. take it out, use the product so you know how to use it, 
and then get familiar with it. Mm -hmm. and so like my generator, I, you know, once a year we'll pull it out, let it run for a little bit and then I make it sure it runs out of gas completely. So that we don't have bad gas in the carburetor. Um, then you have to clean that out. <laughs> yeah. That's a pain in the butt. Yeah. But yeah. That's yeah. Just, you don't have to be a doomsday prepper to be a prepper. Just There's actually, I think a company now that does like MREs that they, you, you can ship to your door Yeah. for prepping and whatnot. So yeah. Ready to eat meals. Yeah. Those are cool, but they're gotten better over the years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So any, anyway, you know, have the extra food, but just make sure that it's something that you normally eat. So that way you're, if it does go, you know, starts to get bad, you can rotate that into your food and meal. That way you're not th wasting it. So what do you think, Hunter? Huh? <laughs> so what do you think, Hunter? <laughs> oh, nothing. Just having a blast <laughs> being here. Um, do they teach you guys anything specific in the military? Not really. Like, Usually when a hurricane came, we got on the ship and we tried to leave port, but I was tied to a pier twice because we couldn't get underway. So I pretty much stayed on the ship during a hurricane. Was it just like insane? Well, I went outside to look and the waves, like usually the pier, there's like probably 30, 40 feet difference in water levels. So you can see, and the water level is like all the way up on the pier and just the water and the winds were crazy. That's crazy. I would have been <laughs> so seasick. <laughs> That's some of the best sleep you'll ever get. Oh, my goodness. I, <laughs> I fell asleep on uh, Jasmine's dad's boat one time, and it was it was big enough where there was an underneath part, and it really wasn't that choppy out, and I was asleep for maybe a half hour down there, and I could not, even on solid ground, I could not walk without feeling motion sickness for the rest of the day. Oh, it ruined it for me. <laughs> I think I was lucky. I never got motion sickness or anything Ooh. on the ship. Like it was roller coasters fun. do nothing to me. Car rides, I'm fine. It's something about the wave. Of, I don't oh, know. Oh, man, that's just... the best sleep I ever get. Oof. 30, 40 foot swells. You're like, oh. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went deep sea fishing once and will never, ever go again. Because <laughs> I, I get motion sickness. But if you're going, like initially going out there, traveling pretty good, the boat's not rocking like crazy, I'm fine. It's when you're stopped and you're just yep. the waves are going like this and oh, man, man that's the best thing your stomach's on spin cycle <laughs> and then you just start i started puking and then it once you start puking it doesn't stop doesn't like stop. we'd go somewhere else even as we're going and not rocking anymore i'm still puking it was miserable and of course everybody wanted to go try this other spot and then <laughs> once we're done the guy or the tour guide um because we had a private boat uh we're like, oh, well, I'll stop here and fillet these fish for you. I'm sitting there like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, can't we do this at the dock? <laughs> White knuckling it. <laughs> Please make it stop. I, I, I had to drink water just so I had something else to throw up other than bile. <laughs> it was terrible. It it sucked. And, and like you said, like once I got on the land, that whole night I was still sick because it you— It feels had, like everything's mm -hmm. still— yeah, it, fuck that. I will. Yeah, I, it was I, always fun to watch people run to the garbage can right when we got underway because we can tell that they don't have their sea legs yet. I don't know Ugh. how you would get used to that because, like, I could not stop throwing up. It's like, at what point? It usually takes a while. I know there were some some guys we had that were real bad with seasick. They had drimmony. They had these pats, and they got patches on them. It doesn't work. Just, yeah, it took them about a week, week and a half to get acclimated. Yeah. And can you imagine that for a week? No, that would be terrible. I mean, I'm sure the vomiting stops, but still yeah. that nonstop nausea. Ugh. I mean, the only time I really, I didn't really get nausea. I got a real bad headache when we had really, really bad swells. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I was fine. Like mm -hmm. I never got sick. I loved it. Best sleep you'll ever get. You're nuts, man. Yeah, I'm you surprised keep saying that, but it's I'm not, surprised yeah. you don't have it's a water true. bed. I used to. Yes. I had one growing up, man. I had one growing up. Maybe that's why I never got seasick. Maybe. Maybe. And that, I just. My rocked. parents had one, and that was so uncomfortable. But oh, there, I loved it. There are some people like Jasmine. Anytime we're on a boat, like when we're at the Ozarks and stuff, cruising around, whether we're we're docked or whatever, it doesn't matter what the. We could be going so fast and it's so bumpy, whatever. She just be completely knocked out in a dead sleep. I'm like, how on earth? It's you fun ever... too. Like if you get in crazy swells, you're like, when you act like you're walking normal, you're really at like a 45 degree walking. That's yeah, trippy. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Man. 
Well, you're going to be our captain if we ever have to freak <laughs> Well, cool. Well, you guys got anything else this week? Nope. Just homework. We've got a bunch of rain. Yeah, I feel like we're in Seattle right now with all the rain we're getting. Keith nice. yesterday goes, as I'm leaving, goes, ah, oh, don't worry about it. Not going to rain at all tomorrow. We'll probably see some Friday. It has not stopped raining today at all. Oh. Well, so Keith tells me, I think I'd make a great weather, man. I was like, yeah. why? Because you're wrong about the weather. He's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. that I literally looked at the weather app yesterday and said, no rain. And then it rained all afternoon and it's supposed yeah. to rain all night. It's like, that, that's the one job I should have gone to school for. Because if you're wrong, you're like, oh, well, weather's unpredictable. What it's crazy weather. What do you want? Yeah. Well, I had a little shift I didn't predict. Darn. Yeah. <laughs> my eyes gives me so much crap with that too because i'll she'll be like is it gonna it looks like it's gonna rain i'll look at the radar i'm like oh there's no rain on here and then it starts to rain mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like all right i give up um whatever the weather <laughs> I, I don't rely on that weather app anymore not the apple one at least you gotta go on the weather channel one yeah that's the one i use and that's yeah. the one that yeah, said it, it wasn't gonna rain and that's yeah. the one i use too and then sometimes it'll be like you'll be watching the radar and it looks like we're gonna get hit with like everything green dark green orange and then a sliver of red as it's supposed to be coming over us Nothing. Not, nothing falls. <laughs> it's like, what the yeah. fuck? Yep. That or the Noah app. The Noah app is really good, but it costs money. I'm not about that life. I'm just saying. It's accurate. He's already making me pay for cameras. I know. <laughs> like he hasn't done enough for this podcast. That greedy it SOB. A, it's a, it was an app. Keith, I had to repay for I'm just too. kidding. Jesus. You could have bought the camera, that, this main camera. <laughs> oh, yeah? I tried to Venmo you for it. You <laughs> I'm like Keith, let me buy a mic. Keith, let me do this. He's like, and he just hey he showed my wife this mic right here, and that's all she wants now for her podcast. It's dope. Did she watch the actual awesome. video on that one? Yes. Thanks she a watched lot. it all the way hey, through. Hey, so yeah. we can get the data. Yep, it that is, logged like <laughs> of the ones that we have out here right yeah, now. It is the cheapest. Yeah, and it works for me clearly so i mean i can talk her into getting you the one that you're using right now i uh, know you've We're sounded great that. you've sounded great in this this whole time yeah anyways <laughs> so <laughs> that's the end of the podcast for you guys yep. as always if you're watching on youtube like and subscribe um check out the new i know there's only three videos out right now but shotgun studio subscribe to that channel i'm going to be coming out with more stuff on that reviewing all this stuff that we use so if you're yep. interested in starting a podcast youtube channel Stay subscribed over there because I'll be coming out with that as well. Be watching out for our merch drop. It's coming to you anytime soon. Yeah. Hats, <laughs> t-shirts, you name it. Yeah. Jet tags. Soon. Yeah, <laughs> Bryce told us yesterday when he was buying the gun, he's like, he loved the shirt so much, especially the tagline on the back. He's like, give me three of them if you can. And so I Bryce know. comes over and asks Keith, and Keith's like, I I don't even know what I'm going to do the next one. <laughs> We're dropping them soon. Don't worry, guys. Soon. So... <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate you watching. Follow us on Spotify or whatever platform or subscribe to our YouTube channel over here at Boomstick or Shotgun Studio as well. See you guys later. Have a good one.